Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to MTGO Traders. My name is Taryn. Let's talk about Ravnica Allegiance. This is a set review, and this is for blue. All right, so we did white. Let's get into blue here. We're not going to waste any time. Hop right into it. Arrestor's Admonition here is a three mana instant return target creature to its owner's hand. Addendum, if you cast this spell during your main phase, draw a card. So addendum, of course, is the Azurius mechanic. Basically meaning you can cast stuff on your main phase and it gives it an extra buff. So returning something is very good and drawing a card is very good. So the Arrestor's Admonition here is going to be a, a one for us in the rating scale here. So if you guys notice, we have a rating scale on the screen. One being amazing, five being not great. Uh, four standard, this is probably going to be in the three to four range. Uh, probably something you won't run into or want to build into your deck list unless there is a quite good blue-white tempo list out there that really wants to take advantage of these addendum effects. Either way, four limited here for draft and sealed, fantastic card and a great uh, pick for you. Next up, we have Benthic Biomancer. This card is amazing here. It's a one mana creature, Murfolk Wizard Mutant. A lot of things going on here. It's a rare, it's also a one one. You can adapt for one, which is the Simic mechanic, which is if this creature has no plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on it. And whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on the Biomancer, draw a card, then discard a card. That's very good, and this is going to be the reason this is going to see some standard play. As far as just seeing a draft and sealed play, it's going to be probably in the 2-3 to three range. It's very aggressive, being a 1-mana one 1-1 one one that turns into a 2-2 two two that also draws you a card. And if you can continue to put plus and plus one counters on it, it gets even better throughout the match. So, Biomancer is a high pick for me in the Simic list or the Azorius Tempo list uh, in draft and in sealed. As far as a card in standard, I think it's going to stay at the 2 slot again. I feel like it's going to be very, very good, and a a blue white tempo list or a simic list uh for just simic as it is in this list as, as it is in this guild right now in this set uh, i think Simic's very powerful or maybe even a simic merfolk list uh since simic merfolk was very good uh in the ixalan block and i feel like biomancer might actually pull that deck list back from the brink and make it a good deck list once again and very competitive next up for us here we are going to be talking about the Chillbringer. This is a 5-mana 3-3 three, three flyer. When it enters a battlefield, tap target uh, creature and opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So for me, Chillbringer is a 3. It's 5-mana for a 3-3. Three, three. It is a flyer, so it can get in for quite a bit of damage, which is nice. It also taps something down. So this could be a good top-end bomb for you uh, in the 14th to 15th slot for you in limited. Um, as far as being a card in standard, this is a 5 one of those situations where, of course, it's great and limited, but sort of terrible in standard. We just have, you know, way more cards in standard to be able to choose from at that five drop slot. And um, really not going to see that in standard. But you will see this a lot in draft and in seal as a great flyer and a great way to kind of slow down your opponent in blue-white tempo or simic tempo. Next up for us, we have Clear the Mind, a three mana sorcery. Target player shuffles their graveyard into the li their library. Draw a card. I'm not really a fan of this card. I feel like it's probably only here for like, you know, the, the uh, like mill kind of situations that are in the actual limited environment. Clear the Mind really feels like a card that you, you're never going to want to put into a deck list. Now you could put into a deck list if you want to like, you know, combine your graveyard and like draw stuff that you had, pre had previously died or removal spells or whatever. It does help in that it draws you a card as well. So there is that upside there, um, but I do feel like it's one of those few cards where it's kind of expensive for what it's doing and you probably don't want to be doing it as far as wasting a turn on your mana. As far as a card in uh, standard, I'm going to go with a five here. It's going to be strictly a sideboard card for us, uh, but there again, there are better sideboard cards in the format right now. Clear the mind just as better for us. Next up, we have Code of Constraint, a three mana instant. Target creature gets negative four, negative zero until end of turn. Draw a card, an addendum here. If you cast a spell during your main phase, tap that creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's next upkeep. But a constraint is quite good here. So I'm going to go with a two on the limited here for draft and sealed. I think it's a high pick for you, good at removing stuff, and of course being able to perform a combat trick and draw you a card. It's doing a lot of things at once here. Uh, being able to have, you know, appropriate blocks for you, or, you know, you trade with a creature, or you draw a card, and of course you get to tap something down. My only issue with this card, of course, is that you can't negative four and tap two different creatures. It's the same creature, um, so that is a little obnoxious. Uh, but at the same time, still a very good situation for you. Good scenario all around. Uh, for standard here for Code of Constraints, uh, it's going to be probably at the Forge slot. It's a little expensive for standard. This feels like there's a lot more stuff at the 3-drop slot that we want to take advantage of. Next up for us, we have Corral Commando. 
Uh, this is a three mana three two vanilla. Corral Commando is kind of at the four drop slot for me for a limited. Um, three mana three two, nothing to sneeze at in blue. I wish this had something like maybe Vigilance or Unlockable or just something on top of it instead of being a vanilla, but it's definitely gonna be a 14th or 15th slot for you in your creature curve uh, in your 40 card deck in limited. Um, as far as this card for uh, standard, this is definitely a five or more. Uh, this is not a good card. Probably should never play it anywhere. Um, unless you really need a Merfolk Warrior that's a 3-2, uh, you're not going to really run into this at all. Next up for us, we have Essence Capture here. Now, I'm going to say right off, Essence Capture is a 3 uh, for Limited and Standard. I feel like it's going to see a lot of play more in Standard than it will see play in uh, Limited in Draft and Seal. It's Counter Target Creature Spell. Put a plus one plus one counter on up to one target creature you control. So, very good in a Simic list in standard where your mana base is a little bit more, um, I would say, flexible and versatile uh, for the breeding pool and of course the other uh, buddy land that's in the format right now. Can't really think of it at the moment, but there's enough uh, mana that's a dual lands in the actual standard environment for this double blue instant spell to be pretty much cast on turn two if we need to be in, you know, in uh, response to an opponent casting a creature spell. As far as limited goes, it's a little mana intensive for us, it's a little slow. Um, it does help us out a lot in Simic as far as giving us a plus one plus one counter. If, there, if the Biomancer is on the field and we put a counter on it, we draw a card, we discard a card, as well as countering a creature. That's really good. So that has some good synergy in the format for us for limited. But I do think that double blue eh, makes it a lot worse uh, than it should be. So probably going to be a turn four, turn five counter instead of a turn two, turn three counter, which is not great. Next up here, we have Eyes Everywhere, a three mana enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, scry one. You can pay six, exchange control of Eyes Everywhere, and target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only anytime you could cast a sorcery. So this is very interesting. Um, I'm gonna put this at the three slot for us. Um, it's kind of expensive to get us to get this to pull off, but a three mana scry upkeep, I think that's perfectly fine and usable uh, most of the time. But in the mid to late game, you can actually swap this with a non-land permanent on your opponent's side of the field, uh, which is really hilarious. Uh, so I really think that's really fun. Um, so we could do that as well. And I think it's going to be really useful in the limited environment, kind of giving you a way to um, kind of represent a threat on the battlefield without really having a threat on the battlefield. As far as this card seeing use in standard, that six mana is just really expensive. And you're probably not going to get there fast enough uh, for it to really matter that much. So that's the only reason it's going to be at five for me uh, for standard. Next up here, we have Fairy Duelist. First up, love the art on Fairy Duelist. I think this is really cool. Uh, this is a two mana one two flash flyer and when he enters a battlefield target creature in opponent controls gets negative two negative one uh, or negative two negative zero until end of turn uh, duelist is very good for us in the draft and sealed environment um, so i'm going to go with a two here on that i think it's quite good i think it's very good at being able to hopefully trade with a creature if the opponent attacks him with a two one you just flash in fairy duelist make it a zero one and then you just trade uh, destroy it with the duelist and have a two one a one two flyer which is very very good as well um so I like it. I think it's great as a flyer. I think it's great as a combat trick. It's a good card overall and having flash. And of course, the art on top of it is really fun too. As far as a card in standard, it's going to be a four for me. A little slow. Again, doesn't do too much on impact. Um, so we're really looking for those value creatures for standard. This might see play in a like blue white tempo deck list perhaps, um, but I don't think it's going to see play uh, pretty much anywhere else in standard. Next up for us, we have Gateway Sneak here. This is a three mana one three, the Dalkin Rogue. Whenever a gate enters a battlefield under your control, Gateway Sneak can't be blocked this turn. And whenever a Gateway Sneak deals combat damage to a player, we get to draw a card. So we do have the draw a card ability on top of this, uh, but because you really need like gates on the battlefield and you know drafting into gates or getting in sealed with the gates in your colors, it's kind of hit or miss. Uh, so don't really think this is going to be seeing that a ton of play. So it's going to be at the three drop slot for me uh, for uh, the most part for limited. I do think that it gets a little bit better in standard, but at the same time, I feel like it's just a little too expensive. So it's probably going to drop down to the four slot for me, three to four slot for me uh, for standard. The Gates Matter deck list probably will see more play now in standard because of the just the plethora of Gates Matter cards. Um, but at the same time, um, it kind of just might just do nothing. But if it draws you a card once or twice, then that's why it's a three here for me in Draft and Sealed, because drawing cards in Limited is very useful and very powerful. Next up, we have Homunculus. This is a five mana two five Hexproof. Very simple and straightforward. 
but I'm probably gonna go with a four here. Hexproof is very good on most uh, cards and most in formats, uh, but a five mana two five, it's a creature that can't really deal that much damage um, and it can't really interact with much. All it can really do is just block and having five toughness is almost not even enough sometimes. So unless you have the blue white list where the uh, you get to assign combat damage based on their, their toughness, then this card is not that important for you in the deck list. It's a very narrow card for draft and sealed, uh, so it probably will be something you'll probably just kind of look at it and pass. Um, as far as standard goes, this is a five through and through. Not really great for that particular format. Again, too expensive, too narrow, and uh, we have better stuff already in the format. Next up for us, we have Mass Manipulation. This is a double X in... Uh, quad four, so four blue sorcery. Gain control of X target creatures and or planeswalkers. I really like ma mass manipulation in draft and in sealed. I think it's fantastic. Um, honestly, it's one of the best kind of take control cards we've seen in a long time. Um, it is quite expensive, um, so you will have to get into that. But in draft and sealed, you'll probably have the mana to do so. Um, so that is quite good as well. Um, so it's gain control of X target creatures and or planeswalkers. That means this is just a six mana sorcery take control of something. But if you have eight mana it gets control of you know two things which i think is really good um so this is amazing for us in draft and sealed i think for standard though it's probably just gonna be in the three to four slot that's a little it's a little again a little expensive but i could see this kind of seeing play maybe in a is it drake's list or maybe in a somewhat control list in a cyborg tech uh, kind of bringing this in kind of making sure that we can actually take control of our opponent's uh, planeswalker so that would be really fun as well next up for us here we have mesmerizing benthid this is a five mana four five octopus when mesmerizing benthid enters the battlefield create two zero two blue illusion creature tokens with whenever this creature blocks a creature that creature doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step and mesmerizing benthid has hexproof as long as you control an illusion so very interesting here uh, five mana four five is very good i wish it had flying or some sort of like evasion of some sort it feels like it should have flying or even Island Walk would have been really fun. Uh, but Benthid here for me is still a solid two in limited here. It's a four or five that creates two blockers for us. And if they get blocked or if those you know creatures are traded with another creature on our opponent's side of the field, they don't untap. So very good. And we also have the added benefit of those zero twos also give the Benthid um, like hexproof. So I think it's going to see a lot of play, a really good bomb for you in draft and in seal. As far as seeing play in standard, it's going to be probably at the, the three drop slot for me for numbers um, or three point slot. Uh, I think this interacting with the Jace from Ixalan is a really cool idea and needs to be brewed around with uh, because the, of course, the Jace from Ixalan creates illusions. So the Benthid and the Jace kind of work together pretty well. So that could be a deck list. We'll have to see what happens with that. But I am kind of interested in seeing this see play a lot in Draft and Sealed. Of course, it is a mythic, so you won't see it too much, uh, but it is fun. Next up for us, we have Persistent Petitioners, an, an, a new favorite of mine. <laughs> this is a two mana, one three human advisor. You can pay one and tap it. Target player puts a top card of their library into the graveyard, or you can tap four untapped advisors you control. Target player puts the top 12 cards of their library into their graveyard. A deck can have any number of cards named Persistent Petitioners. So this is literally a mill deck archetype in draft and sealed and I really love that uh, I think it's gonna be a solid three here for you it's a two mana one, uh, one three so able to block a lot of stuff in the early game and uh, since you can get into as many as possible it's basically the rat colony of the draft and sealed environment now uh, but for mill really fun uh, you can still mill for one one mana and tapping it on your opponent's in step so that's very good as well so you're still being able to get out mill as well throughout the turn so very fun as well um so like it for that as far as a card uh for like standard this is probably gonna be in the three to four drop slot i put it at the three here uh, because i feel like this card could kind of uh, go really well with like the um adaptation card from Ixalan where you kind of make other things advisors and you can kind of tap that way with like tokens or something that might be interesting um so working on that deck list right now actually i'm um, trying to get that out as soon as possible but petitioner is very powerful i think it's very good uh, in draft and in seal again two, a two mana one three is not terrible and a two mana one three that actually can mill 12 cards uh that's a way that's a lot <laughs> That's like one fourth of your deck uh, in draft and in sealed. So be very careful of seeing this card and picking into it in draft and sealed. Next up for us, we have precognitive perception. This is a five minute instant rare. Draw three cards. Addendum, if you cast a spell during your main phase, draw a uh, scry three, then draw three cards. This card is super good, super powerful. And uh, for me, it's gonna be probably at the three drops, or actually not three drops, it's gonna be a one 
an amazing uh, in uh, draft and sealed and in standard. Um, perception for me in draft and sealed is fantastic. It's basically just as ingenuity, but you could describe three if you cast it on your your turn. So in the main phase, uh, in the mid to late game in draft and sealed, you're probably top decking along with your opponent. Perception really helps that out a lot and kind of helps you get through lands if you don't need lands or get lands if you need lands. Um, this card gets way better in standard with Teferi, as Teferi untaps two lands on your un your instep, unstep on your instep. Uh, so this is basically a three mana draw three, scry three, and that's ridiculous. Um, so uh, this is one of the few cards where I feel like it might just turn on and create a whole control archetype around it because it's so powerful. Um, so very good card overall. Gonna see a lot of play in limited and of course a lot of play in standard. Moving on here, we have Prying Eyes, a six mana instant. Draw four cards, then discard two cards. For me, Prying Eyes is a three. It's kind of like Perception in that it gives you good card advantage, but you're discarding two cards, so you're not really gonna get that much if you don't have a lot of cards in your hand to be able to kind of throw to the graveyard that you don't like. Um, it is an instant speed spell as well, so very good on your opponent's end step. So that's going to be really useful for you for draft and for seal. As far as standard goes, uh, this could see some play in some weird, like, I don't know, graveyard matters deck list. But for right now, it's probably going to be a four or five for me. It's very expensive. You discard two cards. And in blue, kind of don't want to be doing that too many times. Um, now, in a new Simic deck list, perhaps this would be very useful or maybe even a, uh, like, black, blue, green deck list, this might be useful. So we got to see what happens there. Um, but Prying Eyes, to me, doesn't feel that great in standard, but we'll have to see. Next up here, we have uh, Terramander. I uh, pronounced it with a, the P last time, where it was like Pteramander, but I think the P is silent like Pterodactyl. The one mana, one, one flyer, you can pay eight and adapt four. This ability costs one less to activate. Reach instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. First up, Terramander, uh, All-Star. It's a one in draft and sealed and in standard. Uh, a one mana, one, one flyer uh, is fantastic. Not even counting the adapt on top of it for you uh, in draft and in sealed. You're going to see this a lot as a great attacker for you on turn one and turning into a 5-5 five, five flyer later in the game as the, the match progresses makes this card amazing. As far as in standard, I think this card is going to be really good in a either blue-white tempo deck list with like a blue-white flyers list, a mono-blue flyers list, a mono blue tempo maybe um, this could also be a really great card for us in the is it drake's list kind of creating a five five flyer instead of creating you know a drake that's maybe a one four in the mid to late game doesn't really i don't really know how the actual interaction is going to go with this it might see some play in that drake's list i'm not entirely sure um, but i do think that terramander overall is fantastic in both formats next of course we have quench here a two mana instant hey it's the closest to mana leak we've ever gotten in the past i don't know what five to ten years <laughs> counter target spell unless this controller pays two colorless uh for me quench again another one this is great for us in draft and in sealed and great for us in standard this is going to see a ton of play the, the, of course, the caveat here is that it's counter target spell, not counter target non creature spell or counter target creature spell. It's any spell, and that's what makes this card amazing. Um, so, very good card. Really love it in uh, standard. Really love it in draft and sealed. We'll definitely see a ton of play, and we'll probably turn on, again, a really good control list for us in standard. Next up for us here, we have Sage's Row Savant. This is a two mana two one. When it enters the battlefield, scry two. So it's okay. It's a two mana two one, which is going to trade with most, thi most things. The real kind of caveat that you really like for the Savant here is going to be that it's going to be able to scry for you. And that's kind of what's going to bring it up from the three to a two. Um, being able to scry in the early game is very crucial for us in blue for Azurius or in blue for Simic. Uh, in draft and in sealed kind of helps you kind of either fix your mana if you need that or get into another bomb or creature threat. So very good for you for that particular situation so i think it's great for limited as far as this card goes for uh standard it's going to be probably a four or a five for me not a huge fan of this card in standard not going to see a ton of play um you really don't need this we have open speaker in the format and open speaker doesn't even see play in standard at all either so the scry three creature or scry two creature is just not great in standard and uh you know just great for limited environments next of course we have senate courier this is a three mana one four flyer you can pay two with the white uh, and the courier gets uh gains vigilance until end of turn so a one floor uh, a one four for three flyer with a particular vigil vigilance if we need it or we can get it um it's not terrible um but it's probably gonna be kind of solidly in the three drop slot for us a flyer is evasion for us in draft and in sealed, but we do have to keep in mind that Orzhov have a ton of flyers as well. And uh, again, the Simic lists have flyers as well. And there's a lot of flying hate in the format too. 
thanks to Gruel and uh, the, just the green in general. Um, I think Courier's fine though at the four toughness slot, so very good at being able to block a lot of stuff in the air, so that's awesome for us. Uh, and being able to attack in with Vigilance too is very good, so this could be a card that kind of attacks in really well against the Orzhov deck list, so that's why it's in the three job slot for us. As far as this card sees play in standard, this is gonna be a five for me, not seeing that much play. Uh, again, too expensive, kind of a, kind of too narrow in that format. If this was a three mana, one four flying vigilance, even then it probably wouldn't see play in standard. It's just not aggressive enough. Um, but it is fun in draft and in sealed. Next up for us, we have Shimmer of Possibility. This is a two mana sorcery. Look the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So for me, I feel like Shimmer is going to be a two in draft and sealed. Anything where it gives you the ability to kind of dig through your deck list and pick a card and throw the, the rest on the bottom of your deck list, um, very good for you, very powerful. It is a sorcery speed spell, so it is gonna slow you down a little bit, but in blue white tempo, uh, I think this is going to see a ton of play, probably not so much in the Simic lists in uh, Draft and Sealed, but Blue-White Tempo or Blue-White Control, perhaps, uh, this will see a ton of play there. As far as this card seeing play in Standard, uh, Shimmer to me feels more like a 3 or a 4. Reason being is I feel like these kind of dig cards are always good and will always be valued highly. The only issue, of course, is that they don't throw these cards into the graveyard, so we may see a, a situation where this doesn't see any play at all. I'm just kind of basing this on it's being able to dig four cards instead of three, so this could see play for sure in standard with a lot of testing. Moving on here for us, we have uh, the Skate Wing Spy. This is a four mana, two, three Vidalcan Rogue Mutants, an uncommon. You can pay six and adapt two, and each creature you control, the plus one, plus one counter on it has flying. So I really like the Spy here. I think it's gonna be a solid two for us in draft and in sealed. The best thing for this, of course, is that it doesn't have to have uh, counters on top of it for the extra ability on the Skate Wing here to actually go into effect here, uh, which is very, very good. So for Simic, and even for uh, Azurius in some scenarios, where you have adapt on cards as well, like the Terramander, uh, this is a very good card. Um, it's gonna be really powerful, I feel like, in standard as well. And so for me, the Spy is gonna be maybe at a four or a three. Like it's a little a little slow being four mana. If it was three mana, it would be probably too good. Uh, but uh, in Draft and Seal, this is a solid two all across the board, giving anything that has plus and plus encounters basically the ability of flight, and that's very good. And having it become a four five as well, for the adapt trigger for six. Again, pretty good in the mid to late game. Just, uh, I, I just don't really, like, I don't even see the adapt on this card. All I see is that plus and plus encounters on other creatures get flying, and that's amazing. Um, now keep in mind, it's each creature you control, so the spy also gains flying as well, so keep that in mind too. Uh, but Skywing Spy, very good card all around for us for draft and sealed. Moving on here for us, we have the Skitter Eel. So Skitter Eel is probably gonna be a three for us, a four mana, three, three, three mana adapt two. Very simple and straightforward, turning into a five, five uh, for four mana or five, five for seven mana, however you wanna look at it. <laughs> um, I think it's fine. I think it's kind of basically like a vanilla creature, but with the keyword adapt on top of it. Uh, for standard though, the eel is gonna be a solid five. Not gonna see play, a little too slow. The interaction's a little too slow. A little too expensive, uh, but for draft and sealed, I think this card is going to see kind of a lot of play. Uh, probably the 14th to 15th slot for you for your bomb slot. Um, I think it's quite good. A four mana three three, nothing to really write home about, but a five mana uh, creature hitting the battlefield the following turn is very good since you can do with the adapt just the following turn because it is three mana instead of like six or whatever. Uh, so very good for that. Next up, we have Slime Bind. Love the art on this card. This is a two mana enchantment aura. Flash enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets negative four negative zero. I think this is very good for you for blue white tempo as well as Simic uh, in the actual like, you know, draft and sealed environment. So very good removal for you being able to lock something down, making it weaker. And of course, could be possibly a uh, good combat trick as well since it does have flash. It is an enchantment aura, so it sticks on that creature for a long time. Most of the time it's gonna turn that creature into a zero whatever toughness, so that's pretty good. For standard for us, uh, slime Bind's gonna be probably a five, not that great. We have a lot of good removal in the format in standard, so Probably not going to see a ton of play in that format, uh, but in Draft and Seal, these are the kind of cards you really want to get into uh, if you don't have too much removal. These Slime Binds, the, all the other cards where they kind of tap stuff, those are very good for tempo decks and exactly what you want to be doing in Azurius and probably even in Simic. Next up here, we have Sphinx of Foresight. This card, <laughs> this is a one across the board. Just going to say that right off the bat. Uh, in draft seal and in standard. This is a four mana four four Sphinx rare. You may reveal this card from your opening hand. If you do scry three at the beginning of your first upkeep. Now keep in mind, whenever I talked about this card originally, I was like turn zero, you get to scry three. This is at the beginning of your upkeep. So it doesn't really happen that way. Uh, so 
do keep that in mind. Flying, of course, at the beginning of your upkeep, get to scry one as well once this, hit, this hits the battlefield, but still, having multiples in your hand, if this is in standard, is ridiculous for a control deck. This is also not a terrible attacker for you in control either. A great card to kind of get in some like game-ending damage, hitting in for one-fifth of your opponent's life total. That's pretty good as well. And for draft and sealed, a four-mana 4-4 four, four flyer it just by itself is very good. Um, in Azurius and in Simic, so I think this card is going to see a ton of play, very highly sought after, a first pickable card indeed in Limited, and a great card for you in Standard, and that Scry 3 at the beginning of your first upkeep is just ridiculous, love this card for that. Next of course we have Swirling Torrent, this is a 6 mana sorcery, choose one or both, put target creature on top of its owner's library, or, and, we can return target creature to its owner's hand for 6 mana. Swirling Torrent is quite expensive, but I feel like it's very good. So let's go with a three here on this. It could be a two here. It could be a giant blowout, basically, being able to bounce something on top of their deck and, of course, bouncing something into their hand. So if they have a wide board state, Swirling Torrent is very good. If they have tokens on their board state, Swirling Torrent is just a removal spell for two different creatures, which is insane. And I really love it for the Orzhov matchup, especially. Um, so very good for that, for draft and for sealed. As far as this card seeing play in standard, it's just one of those cards that it's just not going to see play. It's too expensive. Um, there's just it's too very uh, I guess uh, narrow for that particular format. We have a lot of other stuff uh, for six mana like Rivers Rebuke in the format that uh, do, does basically the same thing, for, but for their entire board state. So that's interesting for us. Um, Swirling Torrent, just one of those cards where it's just a huge blowout for you in limited, and it definitely shows on the card. Next up for us, we have Thought Collapse, a three mana instant counter target spell. Its controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. Um, Thought Collapse is probably going to be a two for me for draft and for sealed. Reason being, kind of hear me out here, uh, there are not a lot of like mill kind of, uh, I guess, recovery cards. We have one we talked about just earlier, but they're probably not going to be in the main board of a player in the format. So being able to mill three cards from the top of their deck list is going to be very powerful. Uh, could hit their main stuff, could hit, you know, whatever it needs to hit. But also, I think in standard, Thought Collapse is going to be quite good as well in a control list or in a mill list as well, uh, being able to kind of, again, continue the mill strategy, but also protect yourself uh, from a creature or a threat that's hitting the battlefield. And Thought Collapse to me is like premium, uh, great great stuff for mill. You'll notice I probably rank stuff that's mill a little bit higher than other things. Um, that's because I love mill as an archetype. And uh, having Thought Collapse in the format is fantastic. Moving up here, we have Veritas Circle. This is a three mana enchantment rare. Whenever a creature in opponent controls becomes tapped, if it isn't being declared as an attacker, you may draw a card. You can pay five, tap a target creature without flying. This is very interesting for us. However, I don't really think this is going to see that much play in Draft and Sealed. Probably going to be a four. There aren't that many cards in the format that tap for itself or an activated ability or something like that. So not really going to see play for that format. I feel like it will see more play maybe in Standard, but at the same time, it's probably going to be a solid four again in Standard. You have stuff like Land War Elves and Druid of the Cowl and, of course, Convoke uh, in the format for Standard. So Verity Circle could be for that. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure that's going to see too much play. You can also pay five and tap target creature without flying. So you could force an opponent to tap something and then, you know, you draw a card from that. So this is why it's a four and not a five for us for Draft Sealed and Standard, um, especially in Draft and Sealed. Uh, it still gives you a card if you're in the mid to late game and you have kind of mana to burn. Um, so that's interesting. But besides that, not going to see much play. Not very powerful. I feel like the real home for this card is going to see play in Commander, uh, where you have a ton of things that are tapping all the time. And of course, your opponents are doing all their different separate things. And Verity Circle is just going to draw you cards flat out. And that's amazing. <laughs> this is also really good against Elves and Modern. But again, too expensive for that deck list to uh, kind of do anything for us. Next up here for us, we have Wall of Lost Thoughts. This is a 2-mana 0-4 defender. When Wall of Lost Thoughts enters a battlefield, target player puts the top four cards of the library into their graveyard so for me while i've lost thoughts is a three um it's a two mana zero four defender that's perfectly fine for you in draft and in sealed it's going to be able to kind of withstand a lot of removal in the format as well as withstand a lot of early attacks um besides that it's also milling your opponent for four two so that's one of the things where i feel like it probably will be a four or a three kind of point there in standard as well kind of putting it into a deck list where we can protect ourselves with wall of lost up we're also milling once it hits the battlefield so pretty good all around for us for a mill deck in standard and that's where it's going to see the most play the last card for us is windstorm drake this is a five minute three three flyer other creatures you control with flying get plus one plus zero to me this is a solid three 
in draft and in sealed. It could be probably a two. A five mana three three flyer is fine in draft and sealed. It's definitely what you want to get into. Um, and if you have a lot of flyers, like if you're getting into an Azurius list with a lot of afterlife one one flyers, this turns them into two one flyers, and that's just gravy town for you uh, for draft and sealed. As far as this card seeing play in standard, it's going to be a five. It's not that fantastic. It's a little too expensive. If, if it was three mana three three flyer with this ability on top. That would be fantastic. That would see some play for sure. But we have favorable wins in the format, which basically replaces the Drake here um, in standard. So for draft and seal, this card is quite good, uh, but probably not going to see any kind of play outside of that. But those are all of the cards uh, for blue here. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like the video if you liked it, of course. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And make sure you hit that bell icon to be notified when a new video hits the channel. We have black tomorrow or later today. Trying to get these out as quickly as I possibly can. Had some hard drive issues this morning, so that was fun. Um, good experience, huh? <laughs> but love you guys. And uh, tomorrow on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time on my Twitch channel, I'll probably, it's in the, the description for you guys. I will be streaming early access on Magic Arena, uh, the Ravnica Allegiance kind of early access stream. And that'll be like me probably doing sealed and draft and kind of that kind of stuff, kind of seeing the interactions and playing as much as I possibly can. Uh, before it kind of releases fully on Magic Arena and, of course, Magic Online. So, going to be doing drafts and sealed events all day long on stream tomorrow. So, hope you guys, you know, uh, come out for that. I'll put the link in the description as well. And, uh, yeah, love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.